Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This time, so in a couple of videos ago, um, maybe about a, two months, something like that, I received a um, like a wireless thermal printer from a company called Munbine, I think it's pronounced. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But um, they make a lot of like, for small business solutions, printing out receipts and all that kind of neat stuff. And they asked me if I wanted to review that printer, and I said yes, because I actually do have a fascination through my experiences with the, the Game Boy printer and whatnot with thermal printing. So I'd reviewed that a couple of uh, months ago, and it seemed like it, the video did pretty well on that, and it was pretty interesting doing a teardown. And so they contacted me recently with a larger thermal uh, label printer, and it's this guy. And um, yeah, I already opened it up unfortunately i was kind of a bit too excited so i don't have the unboxing it just came in a um nondescript plain cardboard box anyway but uh, we can have we can see the manual here this one is not battery powered it's not wireless but it's made to sit on your your desk and to you know constantly print out larger labels so this would be kind of ideal for printing out um like mailing labels with your address and everything already on there you can just stick it on a package and go, and this can actually continuously print back-to-back um, -back many labels at once. So that's sort of ideal for sort of more business needs. Anyway, you can see it plugs into the wall, takes standard USB. Um, there is some software you do need to set up drivers for Windows, um, probably as well as other operating systems. But they do include a disk, and it's this guy right here. And so once you install the drivers, this is just detected by Windows as if it were a standard printer. So um, one thing you can do is if you turn it on while pressing and holding the, um, the print button on the front here, which also lights up to show you the indication of what like the mode of the printer is, um, it'll print out a self-test. And I printed out one here, um, this one <laughs> sort of, I printed out kind of twice back to back. I do have... Here we go. I print out a regular receipt paper, and you can see here um, the software version as well as uh, other information. It was actually produced pretty recently as well, and um, yeah, 150 millimeters per second print speed max, uh, USB interface. Interesting that it has um, the actual voltage of the print head, 23.73 volts, that's cool as well as the temperature. So this does monitor if it over, if it starts to like overheat, it will, um, you know, go into a, a safety protect mode and uh, wait a little while for the head to pr cool down because this is a thermal printer, so the head does get warm. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, if we open it up, this button right here on the side here allows you to pop it open. You can see the head itself, which is one long, um, like series string of thermal elements and that's how it prints across the entire surface. That's really cool. We have uh, two connectors there's um, Red and then black so I'm guessing that's that's where the 24 some volts is as well as you can see sort of on the flex uh, Going over there's a lot of little tiny traces. So the DPI on this is actually pretty decently high and other than that this is all um, spring supported so it compresses when you shut the lid so that it presses flat against whatever you're printing and finally there's the tear off um, area right on there which is like a serrated edge and on the bottom it's pretty simple all we have is a roller here you can see a gear in there so that's what it spins to advance the paper and then these little tabs can move in and out to accommodate different widths of papers so yeah, other than that, it's pretty simple. There appears to be a uh, IR sensor right on the front here, so it can detect. Um, it'll basically, when you first insert a, a piece of um, of paper label to print, it'll um, push it out and pull it back in and align it to this point, so it knows where the the um, label is. Other than that, just give this a shot. On the back, we have our power switch, power input, USB, and on the other side nothing <laughs> so other than that I think we can uh, just give this a power on and we're good to go that's just saying that there's no paper inserted now they have kindly provided a couple of um, just sort of a accordion style sheet of thermal labels and this is continuous feed so um, you can actually print out 
you know, as many as you have in here. So you can just set this to automatically print out stuff. So that's really cool. Anyway, um, to feed the paper, I'm just going to make sure that the width is correct. And this is um, adhesive backing. So give that a close. Pull the paper in, align it to the front edge, and now we're good to go. We're ready to print. So I've already installed the drivers on my computer. I'm running Windows 10, so these install without an issue. And um, yeah, I'll just take you guys to Inkscape and we'll print out a quick little label. Okay, so here we are in Inkscape. I just have a hypothetical uh, printing label, like an address label that you would use to send something in the mail. And it's important to set the, um, the page size to the correct size so it prints out at the correct scale. And we can just go in here and go into print. Uh, we can see I have selected the label printer and we can go into preferences now. And in here, uh, we can set whether it's portrait or landscape, as well as if you're printing out multiple sheets, the order and how many pages you want to print out and all that good stuff. Just like you would any other printer, this is just recognized just like a printer. We have um, under page setup, you can select many different sizes. So if you have different size labels, as well as you can create your own sizes, as long as it physically will fit in the printer. Uh, once again, we can even do rotation. You can change the speed, the density, um, different horizontal, vertical offsets. You can just go and print. So let me get the uh, printer set up with paper and the camera lined up, and we'll just print off a, uh, a test page or two. Okay, so you can just um, print it. You can see it just shoots it out immediately. You peel this off. And good to go. This is just an adhesive line sticker and you can just stick this right onto your package. So I'm um, instead of having externally have to pay another company to uh, print your own labels, you can just make them and this doesn't have to just be for shipping as well. Like you can get all different sizes and colors of this uh, thermal paper and you can actually have this print out a ton of other information. You can even have this print standard receipt paper um, so you can use this kind of double duty uh, for multiple needs for your business as well as I'm thinking I, I don't really do much business wise I do actually ship quite a bit of stuff I do repairs on the side so this will be useful obviously for just printing out uh, shipping labels for me it saves me from having to uh, do that manually and I can print off a batch all at once um, but I kind of want to see what I can do more for random projects and artsy kind of stuff it's sort of neat having a uh, little tiny printer that I can use to do pretty much anything that I can think of. So this will be sort of a neat thing to, to kind of try to figure out some kind of creative uses for this, um, as well as for printing just standard documents and whatnot. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, this was sort of a very quick overview on how to use this printer and generally what the process is. So. Um, if you guys are interested, I will have links down below and, um, if you have a small business or just getting started where you have to print out a lot of small things, either stickers or something like that, this could actually save you quite a bit of time. And, um, they do have other ranges. If you don't need to print such large sizes, they have uh, cheaper models that are, um, like I've shown in the other video that are portable or battery powered or wireless or just smaller in general, um, that might be useful to you guys. And if you actually look, the um, the DPI is pretty high. Like, you can get right up in there and you can see it's it's very crisp. Um, so this is, you know, really useful for something with high detail. So yeah, I thought it would be interesting now to, um, we won't do a full teardown, but just take a peek at what exactly is inside one of these printers. I've never uh, taken apart one of these guys. Um, never really had a chance to. Uh, we saw in the, the other printer that uh, they sent in for review, it was actually quite interesting inside. So let's see exactly um, what this looks like mechanically and electronically inside. So I'll, I'm going to grab some screwdrivers. And I think I forgot to mention the um, power input's actually 24 volts at 2 amps. Okay. Yeah, I'd advise if you're going to get one of these, um, 
don't tear it open if you want to actually use it for business. Um, that's why I'm doing it for you guys, so I'm avoiding the warranty on this guy. Anyway, we can see the AC inputs here. Um, there's just a single board. It's actually uh, pretty simple as well. Get this wire out of the way. And um, interestingly enough, um, there's actually a spot for like a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi um, sort of surface mount uh, subcarrier board. So I'm guessing maybe there's a higher end model or maybe they're planning on adding in the future wireless. That's actually really interesting. I'd like to see that. Um, there's an unpopulated header here, um, something related to that probably. And there's a couple actually uh, down here as well. This is the um, motor driver it looks like. This wire goes to the motor, which is gonna be a stepper motor. We have what appears to be just a grounding pin um, these wires go up to the, um, the IR sensor in the front that allows it to align the page to the front of the printer. We have one big bundle of wires that goes undoubtedly to the actual thermal head. That's this mass here. We have a couple other smaller bundles, which probably are various sensors, um, as well as the LED indicator on the top. Looks like there's actually two sensors. Um, if we go in here... The, um, the one in the front goes to this set of wires. There's actually another set right here. And if we were to open up the printer, yeah. Yep, there's another um, reflective IR sensor as well. So yeah, there's actually quite a bit of sensors. So they put quite a bit of thought into um, detecting the uh, accurate position of the paper while it's printing. And we have our gears all along the sides here. And it's quite... A a bit geared up. These like this stepper motor is a pretty sizable size. That's redundant. Um, so it should have pretty good torque, but they geared it up um, two times basically. Two other sets of uh, gears of increasing diameter. So this is going to be pretty beefy. So it'll be able to pull, um, you know, from an accordion uh, setup like this, it'll have no problems pulling it and feeding it on its own. There appears to be something right in the back here. That's interesting. Sorry about that. There's two screws and it goes over. There's some kind of paper. Ah, that's interesting. So there appears to be, there's some kind of... Oh, I see. So this is actually just a mechanical bit that um, allows you to adjust these. It's basically a rack and pinion. And so when you move one, the other one moves... Um, so it's always centered. That's clever. I like that. Um, other than that, there's really not much going on on the bottom here. Uh, nice beefy wires on the AC input, so that 24 volts, 2 amps. Um, they definitely did not cheap out on the wiring or the connector either, so that's good to see. Big beefy uh, caps on the power input there. We have our main IC, which is a ARM processor. Wow. That is interesting. Okay, so they actually have some power behind this. <laughs> and finally, here we have what appears to be maybe some um, power bits for... Oh, sorry. This is actually the power switch. The AC, the DC input is actually on this side, so it must route that through the switch. Um, we have a switching regulator going on right in here. You can see the coil and the diode for that, as well as the chip. And um, we have nice filtering, so common mode chokes on the input there, just to take off the edge of um, any noise in the power supply. And I'm guessing all this stuff must be related to the thermal head driving it at the higher voltage, the 24-odd volts that it generates for that, as well as uh, switching that. There's quite a number of wires in here, so I'm guessing it... Um, the ribbon, the actual thermal head must be, I don't know, multiplexed in some way or something. You can see right there just how many wires. They're not all in parallel. It must be um, managed in some kind of matrix or array or something like that. I'm not going to go in and take apart this part. This will probably get damaged if I try to do that. So, like I said, I'd like to keep that. One interesting thing I uh, forgot to mention, this is actually a solid block of what appears to be uh, cast or milled um, steel. 
definitely feels kind of heavier than aluminum. So they're using that as a heat sink. That's what's getting your, um, your capability to print, you know, back to pack many pages in a row without it having to cool down. That's acting as a heat sink for the entire thermal head. So very nice to see that. Oh, and here's the actual interrupt switch. So when you open the lid, it won't, it'll refuse to print because it detects that. Uh, so only when you close the lid, this gets pressed down. Very neat. Another thing I forgot to mention is the actual clasp to lock the two halves is really beefy. It's made out of pretty thick, um, hard plastic, so this isn't going to break uh, anytime soon, which is good to see. So yeah, anyway, we've rambled on for quite a, a long while. I printed out some examples for you guys to show you what the general quality is and how quickly this can print. So yeah, um, if you guys are interested, links will be down below. And hopefully you found uh, the short teardown to be uh, interesting to see what the quality is like inside and what parts they opted to use. But yeah, um, if they don't already have a uh, wireless version of this, that would actually be really neat. Um, you just plug this in and attach any device wirelessly to it and send it uh, documents and whatnot to print. That would be really cool. But anyway, that's just an idea. If they don't have something like that already um, in the future, they already have... Obviously, their engineers were thinking that way by adding the footprint for the wireless module on the board. But yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and it is super hot today. It's like almost 100 degrees outside, and the house is actually not much cooler, so I am sweating uh, quite a bit, so I think I'm going to end it here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.